Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Another entry here for my series, this time one that I picked myself, but actually I picked it because it was very similar to one of your recent suggestions, in, this, in that case the Ticolo Shea. And when I was comparing the two cryptids, one against the other, it was interesting to note that they are pretty similar, and that is pretty fascinating because when one thinks about it here are two different cryptids in completely different parts of the world and yet they are very very similar to one another so when you have a chance after you finish watching this entry check out again the T. Coloche and you'll see how similar they are to one another and it makes one realize are they part of the same species maybe or are they uh, just happen to be coincidentally similar to one another it's up to you to decide and this particular cryptid has actually been suggested in the past and I was thinking about getting to it and then not later on it just depended on um, I guess the interest but this was finally a good excuse to talk about this and the cryptid I'm talking about is far more well known in certain parts of the world like it is one of their all stars um, especially um, in, like in Mexico and other Southern American countries and in this case I'm talking about the cryptid known as El Duende which you'll see a picture of here you go to any parts of the world where people speak Spanish or speak some form of Spanish and they will know of this cryptid it is a legendary cryptid El Duende um, it is one that has stories have been told about this particular creature for who knows how long anybody that you know there um, if you happen to encounter let's say you're on a trip and you're in Mexico they will tell you about their mothers about their grandmothers about their great grandmothers always seem to be women too um, that always have a tale tied to El Duende and their mothers told them and their own mothers told them and that's how it goes it's just one of those things where it just keeps getting told from generation to generation encounters here encounters there um, it, to this day there are still reports of El Duende having uh, interactions both with adults and more importantly with children and in this case El Duende is not just one entity it seems to be like there's a secret almost race of these and of these entities in and around the parts of the world and depending on who you encounter either they're kind-hearted or they've got a mean streak in them and I'll explain that here in a minute so what is El Duende? El Duende is think of it like the goblin version of like the Latin American countries the Southern American countries it's a short stocky little man probably around two three feet tall and it is a native of the forest it lives its entire habitat is in and around the forests and what it does there is it either pr tries to protect the forest areas or it uses it as a place to hide and then later visit humans um, at their homes in particular and that's where it tends to get into a little bit more of a nastier streak but El Duende tales tied to El Duende have gone on for a long long time if not decades at least centuries depending again on who you speak to and what they have to say um, if anyone by the way has any direct ties because the main thing associated with these tales is it's always friend of a friend type of deal but if anyone has any direct ties then it will be interesting to hear that um, on any sort of the comments. Um, people consider El Duende to be like either a goblin or a little pixie or an elf of some sort. Just something that lives in the forest and pretty much for the most part tries to just um, mind itself. It's just, it's just living there. Uh, maybe it comes into some interaction with um, human beings but for the most part it does not have um, a goal when it comes to just living with humans it's just some like a Bigfoot type thing where it's just on its own living in the forest um, in terms of the good streaks and the bad streaks let's first talk about the good ones um, it appears that the El Duende has on the good side 
a hus a soft-hearted nature to it. Um, there are tales where El Duende will try to protect animals that are being hunted unjustly. And what I mean is this. Um, El Duende is more like a keeper of the forest. And when people come out and go into the forest, El Duende apparently can monitor, or if there's more than them, then several El Duendes can monitor the interactions that the humans are having with other animals and its sole purpose is to ensure that there is no unnecessary harm being done to the animals. It'll, uh, it'll understand the difference between hunting for food and hunting for fun. Um, if people are hunting for food then that those are fine. Um, it allows it because the idea is you know, Duende, if it sees that you're hunting something and you're gonna eat it later on then it just knows that it's the nature of things, it's life itself. But if you're hunting for sport, and let's say in particular birds, the Duende seems to have a soft spot for birds, then it will come out and it'll either scare the bejesus out of you or it'll do worse. It'll try to um, harm you itself because for the Duende to see something in terms of uh, something as innocent as I say as a bird being shot down just for sport then it gets mad it does not like that at all and when that happens that's when it starts coming out and perhaps even visiting some of the homes of the people that it encountered um, other tales tied to El Duende have to do with um, it's you know the way it looks um, some people have said that it has a hat it wears clothes um, it's more of a civilized um, aspect whenever it has that clothing others their encounters are it's more along the lines of it's a naked man but it's fully hairy like the entire body is covered with hair but you can still tell it's not a monkey you know it's not anything else as far as any other kind of primate it's an actual man just a smaller sized man and something that is completely covered with hair um, El Duende just likes to relax there are tales where people have found what looks to be something resembling El Duende but it's made out of red clay uh, the, the, the story behind this is El Duende whenever it relaxes sometimes it catches itself unknowingly falling to sleep and or it doesn't catch itself falling asleep and when it does so it transforms into clay and so when people see this out there in the forest they think it might be some kind of artifact from who knows how many civilizations back they take it home but what they don't realize is that at night El Duende transforms back to life and when that happens it may cause a little havoc within the home itself and that's why it's advised that if you ever come across Let's say you're doing your travels, you're going on a trip, you're finally going to some uh, foresty area in some, uh, let's say, Latin American country, and you happen to come across what looks like an artifact from the Mayan civilization, don't take it home, because, or don't take it anywhere, because the idea is it could be actually El Duende sleeping, and it caught it accidentally transformed into clay and then when it wakes up at night then that's when it has something else now as far as the encounters that are on the bad side um, there are tales and these are mainly tales uh, tied from parents trying to scare their children into doing the right thing at uh, one day sometimes comes across as the boogeyman of sorts because a parent will say don't do this or don't do that or El Duende will come at night and the reason they say that is because for real the real tales um, tied to El Duende visiting at night are this he apparently likes to come out at night um, after he's scoped out um, and let's say we're talking about a bad Duende somebody uh, one of the Duendes that is not on the good side that likes to do bad things um, after he scopes out, because they will, they'll actually camp out um, nearby an area of a home and try to see who's there, who's living there, in particular little children. And when they come out at night, they try to go to the little children, and for whatever reason, they try to steal some of the children's toes. I don't get it, you know, I don't know the deal involving that um, as far as toes. But the notion is that if El Duende is not careful enough, he will actually not only steal the toes, but he'll steal the entire foot. 
and in some cases El Duende will also try to steal the child itself. I don't know if the El Duende does this to um, pay revenge or anything along those lines, but people have mentioned that these are the same ones that pass tales through generations and generations, that the reason El Duende does this is because it either eats the children, like it has a favorited appetite when it comes to the children, or it just tries to steal them to create havoc, like to create um, evil, um, and, and kills them later on because it does this. The way to spot El Duende, by the way, is it has only four fingers. There's no thumb. So if you see, let's say, a little person and a little person, everything is fine, look normal, but more importantly, they have a thumb, then you're okay. But if you see, let's say, something that just is unsettling, um, something where it's a three foot, something that looks like a person, um, obviously completely hairy, but most importantly, they have no thumbs, then that's a dead giveaway that it is El Duende roaming the area, and then that's when it's not a good thing. Um, there are other tales, too, with regards to how to accidentally attract a, a Duende. Um, people have said that whenever you're in a foresty type area, um, if you're in and around... Um, let's say you're trying to go to your home and if you do so and just inadvertently you start whistling uh, people around you will tell you to shush and then when you ask why it says that they tell you that never whistle while you are in any kind of forest area or any kind of bushes because all you're doing is calling on El Duende to attack you which is pretty strange I mean there's people that that truly adamantly in those areas uh, go by this. They, they do not want anybody to attract El Duende because to them he is more of like a spirit force, uh, somebody that the way to attract him is to whistle. And this actually ties to El Duende himself because one of the ways that he tries to, the evil ones, that, that they try to take away children is that they'll whistle. And the whistling, if heard, seems to be more of like a hypnotic thing. Um, especially towards children. Um, there was one story I came across where somebody mentioned that uh, they were just walking along trying to go home and then they heard a whistling and it became almost like a trance-like thing where they weren't recognizing what they were doing but they were suddenly going in the direction towards the whistle and it was only when their mom was yelling at them just across from who knows where just laying at them you know to come home or something along those lines like you know dinner's ready the kind of thing where you know it's your mom's voice and it snaps you out of attention in this case that little boy was snapped out of attention and he couldn't recall you know exactly what had occurred all he knew was that he heard something and suddenly he was not really in control of himself and you know it took a familiar voice to snap him out of it and then only it was only till later on that he was realizing that it is something involving El Duende doing this so what are some of the categories of El Duende um, Again, there's the good side, uh, keeper of the forest, trying to protect the animals. Uh, if the idea is if you're in a wooded area and you're just minding your business, then El Duende seems to mind his as well. Um, the only time you really attract attention is if you're doing some kind of unfair, ungamely-like hunting. Um, then there are the bad ones that try to have something as far as... Uh, either taking away like say the toes of children or trying to t actually steal the children themselves there are also tales of the duendes trying to barter in an evil like manner with the parents um, maybe threatening them and saying if you don't give me your child then something else will occur um, but some popular misconceptions on the El Duende on who he or she could be, um, mainly he because all the tales I've heard and I've seen um, about the El Duende seem to just be predominantly men, are it could actually be that El Duende is a spider monkey, and you'll see a picture of it here. And the reason why I mention this is because whenever you're in the forests and let's say you start hearing some rustling, particularly some rustling, towards some trees it's only natural where you start imagining things suddenly things um, go from a normal level to a much higher escalated level your adrenaline's up um, you start 
interpreting other things as other items and if you see just blurs here and there the rustling a hairy like body it could turn out that it's actually a spider monkey which makes kind of some sense I can see where some people are saying um, all these people and all the encounters that they had um, especially in the forest are nothing more than old Duendes um, especially when it comes to the supposed known habitats of old Duendes being stuff like um, Mini, like small caves, older trees, um, places where people used to live but not anymore. It's the kind of areas where a sp something like a spider monkey um, would normally be found. It's a place where um, it's a good habitat for those for those creatures, the spider monkeys. Um, others particularly say that El Duende is something else. It's something supernatural. It could be something as far as let's say a true spirit or it could be something bad like let's say a demon of some sort um i i tried to find because in my own case i have heard stories of el duende passed along in my youth and i've heard of them really bad encounters with el duendes that seem to match what people interpret um encounters with let's say ghosts and demons seems to be but um, unfortunately, I didn't come across any other tales, so if anyone has anything like that, um, it'll be interesting to hear that too. But those are the really, really bad ones, and those are another interpretation of El Duende and when it comes to what they are. My own opinion, um, I don't know. Um, I think that there's it's, it's one of those things where there's so much areas involving forests um, anywhere in the, in the world that if there's something like this living out there, it's something where too many people have passed it along too many people have reportedly seen it it's one it, it's too big to ignore in other words and it's interesting to see that even after all these years tales stories um, encounters with anything involving El Duende including several different versions of El Duende because there's for example like El Duende del Monte there's El, uh, like El Duende of another part of Mexico of Colombia, of of the Philippines, um, it's too many places to otherwise discard it. So, um, in my opinion, I, I've, I haven't come across any, thankfully, um, especially the nighttime tales, especially the ones that are seem to be the really really bad ones, where people say it's it's El Duende, but it's something else like supernatural poster go. Uh, poltergeist like um but in those cases um it, it's it's it, i can't really discard it so i'm not of the opinion yet that it's something that's too far out to um conceptualize up front so but yeah that's the stories t and the tales and everything tied to the cryptid known as el duende so again if anyone has anything that they can share please post them below share your comments it'll be happy i'll be happy to see anything um i wish i had more of the tales on the freakier on the net on the nightmarish more side of us. so if anyone has anything like that that'll be interesting to see too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye